Hey everyone, it's Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Now, we've seen Android running on some pretty small devices before, like the Xperia Mini, but I've never run it on something quite so small as this before. This is the HP Veer, and some enterprising folks have figured out how to replace its webOS operating system with Android. So, we're going to give it a try ourselves and see how well this early build runs on such a small device. Or we're going to brick it. Stay tuned. Okay, for this procedure, we're going to need a PC, the USB cable that came with the Veer, remember it's a special one, and the HP Veer itself, with at least one gig of memory free, and a degree of intrepidity. I wasn't joking before when we were talking about bricking. This is a procedure which, if done improperly, could very well render your Veer completely unusable. So proceed at your own risk, okay? So the first thing we want to do is make sure a piece of software called Novacom is installed on your computer. This is a software driver package that allows your machine to communicate with a WebOS device via USB. The easiest way to install Novacom on your machine is to download it directly from the source. There's a post in one of the threads linked below that features direct links to the Novacom drivers, so do that first. If you've used WebOS Quick Install, there will already be a folder in your file system called Palm Inc. If there's not, go ahead and create one under Program Files. Then download the Acme installer and unzip it to that same Palm folder. There's a link to that one in the same post I just mentioned. Once that's taken care of, let's navigate to the Android on Veer site. And at this point, it's just a simple matter of following directions. The developers behind this port are primarily located in China, I believe. So some of the sentences might take one or two reads, but it's still understandable for the most part. We're going to download the Android root FS and boot tarballs and dump them into a folder I'm going to call TinyDroid. Now I'm going to download uimage.install as well, but that file I'm putting into the palm folder we created before. That's important. Then we're going to power on the Veer, plug in the USB cable, and mount it as a USB drive. After that, we'll drag and drop the Android root FS and boot tarballs to the Veer. Make sure they don't go into a specific folder on the Veer, just the root level. Now we're going to reboot the Veer. While it's starting up, though, we're going to hold down the up volume key to force it into recovery mode. When the Veer is safely in recovery mode, we'll go back to the computer and open the command prompt by typing CMD at the start menu. We'll navigate to the Palm folder where the Novacom executable and uimage.install files live and run this command. Install logs should start scrolling on the Veer, and that's the last step we should need to take for the installation. Now, once installation is complete, we should be taken right into the boot menu here. Now, in order to navigate in this menu, we're going to use the volume keys to scroll and the power key to select. So we'll just select boot into Android and hit power. And there she goes. After a short while, we're running Android on the Veer. As you can imagine, this must be, uh, this is rather profound as a WebOS user to be running Android. As you can see, we're, uh, if I can get to the settings here and show you, we are running Android version 2.3.7 Gingerbread. And this is an alpha, so there's a lot that's not quite working yet. Uh, namely, there's no phone functionality. So this is not yet ready to be anybody's daily driver. Also, Wi-Fi connectivity for me was spotty at best. It works for some people I've read, but it couldn't quite latch on to my home network. So with limited connectivity, I couldn't really test out anything that relied on the internet to function. In addition, there's no Google Play or Android Market functionality yet, though there is what looks to be some sort of Chinese variant of some kind. Um, in addition, the battery life indicator didn't work, and so on. There's a lot of work yet to be done to make this usable. That said, it was nice to take a tour around Android on such a tiny device as the Veer. And the guys who did this port have made some really, really nice touches. Uh, WebOS gestures like the up swipe, 
and the back swipe have been implemented, and they've been translated to their respective functions, which is home and back on Android, making it much more usable than your standard gingerbread. Also, the physical keyboard does, in fact, function. And it still feels just as good as it ever does. But if you don't want to use that, for the first time ever, a WebOS device can boast of an on-screen keyboard that's at least usable. Too bad it took loading another OS to make it happen. So, that's Android on the HP Veer. Now, is there a lot of work left to be done? Yes, this alpha build is barely functional. But if you look at the history on some of these threads, it hasn't taken these devs a very long time to get to this point. And if I were to put any money on it, I would bet on at least a functional Veer coming before the end of the summer. Now, whether anyone would want to install Android on such a tiny device and use it as their daily driver, well, that's anybody's guess. But dual booting is a pretty cool thing, and it's really, really nice to have options for when WebOS can't fill an application need or when Android isn't usable enough for a particular situation. Anyway, this has been Michael with Pocket Now. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave us a comment. Let us know whether or not you attempted this and what your success rate was like. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.